Hey everyone, so I hope everyone had a, a good Christmas and New Year. Um, I've been mostly having a bit of time off, but um, I did design an overspeed controller for the water wheel over Christmas, which is uh, what this video is all about. I'm going to go and fit that. But also, unfortunately, the water wheel had a breakdown just before Christmas. I think it was like Christmas Eve or the day before or something. Um, a customer reported making a banging noise. Um, we did some videos and things, but I just couldn't seem to see what the problem was. He couldn't figure it out. Um, and so I don't really know what the problem is. So I'm just going to take a few spare parts and a few bits and pieces and uh, we'll just have to assess what it is when we get there. I don't think it's going to be anything too serious, but um, yeah, I just don't know. So I'm going to take some gearbox parts and stuff like that. Um, but it's not a wasted trip, like I say, because I was going to um, take this uh, overspeed controller anyway. It's a, uh, it's a proximity sensor which reads the speed of the wheel and uh, then that goes to a tachometer relay and then that relay monitors the speed. If the speed goes past a set value, it then opens a relay. Um, that relay then uh, sends power to a actuator, uh, which is mounted on a bracket, which then pulls a little arm, which pulls a pin out, which drops a flap. It's very simple and um, should be very reliable and effective. So we needed to go and fit that anyway. Um, but yeah, so the plan is fit that, sort this breakdown out, and then I reckon that's going to conclude this project then, and then it is back to concentrating on the barn. All right, let's get over there and see what we're dealing with. Hey everyone, so I am back at the water wheel. Um, unfortunately, it had a breakdown uh, just before Christmas, so it's been off for a while. It was on for about two weeks, but then um, something's gone wrong, and I'll show you that in a minute. But um, on a positive note, I've fitted a controller. Let me uh, show you this here. Let me get a key, hang on. So I've fitted this controller, it's my own design. And in here we have a 240 to 24 volt supply. That 24 volt supply powers this relay. This relay is a tachometer relay. It monitors the speed of something. Um, they're going to have a sensor on the wheel, which I haven't fitted yet. And if the wheel goes over a certain speed, which is dictated to by, uh, how much I adjust this knob, um, it's going to trip a switch. It's going to send some power then through this cable. And this cable then goes to an actuator by the uh, intake. I'll show you it now. So uh, that cable runs along there. It's only 24 volt, so it's not dangerous. This side of it is all 24 volt near the water. And then it comes over here into this box. Richard made this nice box. And then in here, we have a fail safe actuator. So that will uh, close via spring tension um, if power is lost or if it goes over speed. Um, and then as that arm pulls backwards in that direction, it pulls this pin out of here and then that closes the flap and switches the water off. I'll set it up, I'll go and imitate a failure and you can see what happens. Right, so I shall go and imitate a failure. So um, basically make the uh, controller think it's gone over speed by pulling the relay out. And you'll see how it functions. So I'm pulling the relay out now. That's the relay out. There you go, pretty nifty eh? Very simple and very effective and fail safe because it retracts like that even if there's no power. So yeah, that's how that works, which I reckon is pretty nifty to be honest with you. Because don't get me wrong, there's scenarios in which that could fail if there was a really hard frost or something and it all gets stuck. But if that doesn't actuate, we still go on to the electronic dump load. And if the electronic dump load goes wrong, we've still got that. So for the both of them to go wrong at once would be very unlikely. So we've got a fail safe and there's a redundancy. So there's two, two safety features now. So that should be mean the wheel can never overspeed. Right, let's go down here and I'll show you the uh, problem, the breakdown. So uh, I decided to change over to V-belts just because I was having um, belt alignment issues and uh, the customer changed the V-belts 
and after changing them the wheel was moving a bit slower so I don't know if I got the ratio wrong or what but um, either way there was more torque put on the wheel and uh, after a few days of running like that it actually broke the, the, the steel around here not the weld, the weld is fine and I've ground it back a bit now but the, the steel plate, this end plate has sheared all the way around there you can't really see it now because I've dug into it with a die grinder to, to clean it up because I'm about to weld it today. So I'm going to weld that back and then I'm going to weld an additional plate over it and then that should be sorted then. So yeah, I'm just uh, waiting for my friend John to show up with a uh, arc welder and I'm going to weld that up and like double plate it so it's twice more than twice as strong as it was before. And then we'll get the belts all tracking and aligned right and then I'll run through testing of this failsafe controller. So what I do find quite interesting is um, I must have welded this just too hot and deteriorated this, the, the steel because for a couple of days I think, uh, no maybe a day, uh, it was running at full output with that completely cracked and sheared so all of the torque was being transferred off this one side and this other side is fine. So I don't think it's actually like the area is not big enough to hold it. I think I must have balls the weld up. I must have just welded it too hot. So we'll correct that today. Right then, it is the next day. Yesterday was an absolute nightmare. I, uh, I didn't know that that weld was broken before I got here. I didn't bring a welder. So I had to borrow one. And the um, person I borrowed it from doesn't do a lot of welding. And it wasn't the, the equipment weren't really up for this sort of job. And so it's a right old messy job. Um, I've run it overnight and it's strong enough. It's held. Um, I'm going to come back with a proper welder and tidy it up because I'm not happy with it. But that's okay because I'm coming back anyway at some point. We've fitted the uh, proximity sensor. So I'm going to run through some testing of this and I'm going to get all this painted and then it should be up and running then. Um, so we're using a Jubilee clip as a proximity, um, you know, as to change the proximity. And then we've got the sensor here, and then that goes to that relay and uh, is going to tell us if the wheel's going too fast and it will shut the water off. We're just waiting for the leak to fill up and then we shall, uh, we shall run through some tests. Yeah, um, what I did was I welded that back to how it was and then I've welded this plate over it as well. I say it is a mess. It'll look a lot better once it's painted, but uh, yeah, I'm not exactly proud of that. <laughs> but I couldn't get in there with a with an arc welder, you know, just couldn't do it. So I'm going to bring a proper welder and sort that out, but hopefully it'll hold until then. Oh, we're just starting to see some movement. All right, John, should we let a bit of water through? Yeah. That'll do it. Get it started, get it running. If it over speeds now, it's going to trip our actuator. So hopefully we won't over speed it. So if it over speeds before the controller gets it, it's going to pull this and shut the water off. So hopefully it doesn't do that. I'll let the controller get it and load it up. And then I'll uh, imitate some failures and we'll check that that system is working. Right, okay, so I am going to go and um, go and just turn the um, RPM monitor down a bit to imitate a failure. It's currently set to 15 RPM. So if I turn it down to low, it should imitate a failure. So that's turned down. And there we go, that worked. And now the wheel should shut off. So now it doesn't take long now because we've shut the water off. The wheel obviously will slow down and you know it's still gonna have some water, but it's not gonna get out of control. So yeah, that worked. So if we come into here, all I did was uh, adjust the uh, RPM sensitivity. So I put it back to 18 where we want it to trip. Okay, so the next test condition is gonna be power failure. And now power failure should trigger the dump load controller electrically 
but it should also shut off the water. So I'm going to get um, John to film while I go and switch the grid off and we'll check that that works properly. Right, I'm going to go and switch the power off and simulate a power cut to the grid and John's going to film what happens to the wheel and uh, hopefully the actuator should trigger as well. Right, let's get down here. All right, so that has worked. Okay, so that was imitating the power cut, so that's good. So we're back up and running, and the uh, overspeed controller seems to be working fine. I can see the uh, proximity sensor light coming on and off. We're on V-belts now, so we don't have tracking issues. And that's doing about a thousand watts there. So I've got a few things to tidy away and I've got to paint that weld in. And then uh, that'll be it, project done. And when I come back for a celebration that they're gonna be having here, I'll just tidy up that weld, I think. All right, so that's, uh, that's all done. Welded back up, painted. Just got to uh, put the cover back on and uh, that's it. So I reckon that is going to be the last time you see this wheel. Well, certainly anytime soon because uh, it's done. Project complete, all working. It's got all its fail safes and controls and everything. Um, yeah, hopefully that'll be it now. No more problems. I think we've ironed out any teething problems with it. So yeah, project concluded. Hope you enjoyed the series and uh, big success. Uh, now I've got to concentrate on the barn. I've got to really get back and work on the barn now. Now this is done. So uh, those videos will be coming back soon. Hey everyone, so I'm back home and uh, just looked over the footage of that uh, weld and it looks so bad on camera, especially after it rusted over a bit. I just had an absolute nightmare that day. I couldn't get in at the right angle with the um, arc welding rod. The mask I was using wasn't flicking over properly and I was getting blinded. Um, the power kept tripping out and the rods we had were quite old and uh, they weren't designed for, um, uh, rated for doing a vertical weld and that's the only angle I could get in. And so they're just slumping off as, as, uh, as arc welders do. do. And so I'm going to have to go back there with a MIG and just uh, tidy it up. Um, but it is strong. That's, that's the, the main thing. I've got a lot of weld in there. As messy as it looks, it is strong and it's double plated. And uh, it's also been working ever since. So I've got it set up on my phone now where I can monitor it on the cloud. And so I thought I'd just show you that quickly. Okay, so here is the output currently of the um, water wheel. As you can see, currently we are at uh, 870 watts, 0 0.87 kilowatts, and that is 54.38% of the uh, total output it's capable of, which is about 1.6 kilowatts. Um, as you can see, we've done total yield is 479 kilowatt hours so far. But um, that was broken down because of this issue over Christmas for a while. So that would have been a lot higher if that hadn't have happened. Um, this is quite interesting. Here you can look at the um, output over a period of time. So if we go to when I first turned it back on after the breakdown, it was up at 1.2 kilowatts there. Um, obviously the, we're at a dry period at the moment and so the river is dropping and you can see that here the customer had to turn it off or almost off briefly just to do something but you can see it's been slowly slowly dropping and then again there that was all day uh, 23.7 kilowatt hours that day slowly 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 dropping and then if we go to the next one again slowly 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 dropping and then into today uh, still dropping because we're down to um, you know back there we were up to well 800 and something and still here maybe it's come up a little bit maybe they had a little bit of rain but you can see it's been slowly dropping over those last few days as, as the river drops down you know that's one of the reasons that um, we're not too concerned about that um, excessive splashing once you get up to like 1600 watts because that actually doesn't represent a large 
period of the year, even midwinter like we're in now. Um, it won't be running at that all the time. It certainly won't be running like that for at least six months of the year. And then it'll probably only run at full flow for maybe two, three months max, absolute max. The rest of the year, it's going to be running at much flow, lower flow rate. So in order to make it work at those really high flow rates, we'd have had to basically double the cost of everything to make it much bigger for it only to work for an extra two, three months a year at full flow rate. So that's why um, it's a good example because we're it right in the middle of January now and it's running at 800 watts, you know, and that's the full flow rate. So, uh, so yeah. Anyway, it's going to be back on the barn full time. That project's concluded. And um, yeah, video will be coming out with that soon. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.